Tuesday, so I'm over here in the vitamin shop. It's after it's the end of the day. I'm over here at the vitamin shop. I'm over in the uh, kind of natural soaps. Yesterday, um, I posted a video all about the different ingredients and in soaps, um, and I mentioned um, a lot of you guys asked me about the African black soap, and this Nubian Heritage brand here has. Um, a lot of different fragrances of the African black soap, but this I guess is more the traditional one. And it says that it's made with aloe vera, oats, and vitamin E. Um, vitamin E, like vitamin E capsules on the skin can be very irritating, by the way. Um, everybody gets excited about doing that, and it's actually a bad idea. But I suppose in a soap, it's probably okay. Um, yes, palm ash, that's what I mentioned in the video yesterday, ash. Tar, tar can be anti-inflammatory. Um, tamarind extract, I'm not entirely sure what that would do, if anything. I remember drinking tamarindo juice and not really liking it. It was really, really tangy, but I would probably like it now. I like the taste of tamarind in general. Um, so, yeah. But uh, they have a lot of other kind of fun scents. Indian hemp, hemp and Haitian vetiver. Um, I bet that smells nice. All of these, I would imagine, are pretty drying. Um, goat's milk might be a little soothing. But as far as the Castile soap, um, it is uh, actually quite drying. I mean, it's it's almost like your traditional soap soap in that it's a vegetable oil and um, potassium hydroxide, which isn't quite lye, but is a uh, is a really strong base. So um, this is quite quite. Uh, basic um, and can be very very dry. I mean the pH is very high plus they all have you know a lot of essential oils in them so I'm not a fan of using this Castile soap on the body period even if you dilute it. Um, I know a lot of people like doing that but um, I wouldn't advocate it. It'd be problematic. Shea butter is a nice moisturizer, by the way. This raw, wild-crafted shea butter looks like a good one. It's, a, it's good for, for the body. No, it, it won't prevent stretch marks. There's really nothing you can do to prevent stretch marks except not expanding rapidly. Even even that. <laughs> um, this one looks good. It's just uh, shea butter, nothing else. Out of Africa. Then they have a scented lavender one and a vanilla one. So, So, one thing they have over here um, is a vitamin K cream. Vitamin K creams, you guys, can actually be helpful for um, bruising. Like a lot of times if you have a cosmetic procedure and it's gonna lend itself to bruising, they may give you a vitamin K cream. I don't know how good this one is. Unfortunately, they put lime fruit extract in it. Like, I mean, honestly, all of these like, all natural, cruelty-free, not tested on animals, like the stuff that you want to buy is the stuff that they go putting like, like furocoumarins in that are just going to give you a phytophotodermatitis. Like why couldn't they have just put the vitamin K in here and left all, all alone? They have an SPF 25 moisturizer. This one contains fragrance, unfortunately. Okay, you guys ask me about the Derma E brand all the time and I'm not going to review every single Derma E product that they have in here, but um, in general, I'm not really a fan of the Derma E products because basically they have the same shortcoming that this Revive Labs is doing here, where they just put a bunch of essential oils in their skincare products that are going to be problematic. Um, this particular product, however, um, you all asked me a fair amount about like putting oils on the face. There's really no utility in that. Jojoba oil can be moisturizing and argan oil can be a little bit as well, but they can also be very irritating. So it's usually just better to find a moisturizer that has these in them rather than putting them directly on the skin. But has anyone used this one and do they like it? It seems like one that would be popular. Um, it has, again, vitamin E oil, which can be irritating and uh, pumpkin seed oil. I mean, again, that can be very irritating. I wouldn't use this, but. Um, maybe it's popular. I really wish I really wish their hydrating day cream had um, 
didn't have fragrance in it as well. Otherwise, it, it would seemingly be okay. It has um, it has a little bit of witch hazel in it, which can be soothing. But again, in a moisturizer, it's like I think they just use that as the water. I'm over here in the teas. I like these yogi teas, except for that uh, sedative tea I tried. But um, I tried the, there's like a berry nighttime skin detox one. Um, ooh, this, this one looks good, except it has caffeine. They have a caffeine-free um, berry uh, de skin detox. That's really good. Um, maybe the peach one is good. I need to walk away. But fun fact, I got more matcha tea. So I'll show you guys what I got from the matcha reserve. All right, so from the matcha reserve, um, they sent me this peach matcha, as well as their strawberry, which is a new flavor. I'm pretty stoked to try these out because I have some, oops, I have some rose hips, some whole rose hips that I got from, I got from iHerb, I believe. And um, I'm thinking that brewing the rose hips with these peachy strawberry flavors of the matcha, ooh, that's gonna be good. I bet you could even mix the peach and the strawberry together. Ooh, wouldn't that be delicious? Speaking of delicious, they've got some desserty, desserty flavors that they sent as well. Chocolate. This one looks, this one I've had actually and is really, really good. And then they sent me caramel. Mm, that's delicious. That sounds delicious. That's going to be so good. I bet you could do chocolate and caramel together. And who isn't stoked for this? Peppermint matcha. Woohoo! That's going to be delightful. So those are the teas. And then, of course, you know, they wanted me to try out their masks, which I don't know. I'm not too jazzed about them, to be honest with you. Um, and at first I was like, no. And then they're like, well, we'll send them to you anyway. I'm like, great. Um, I'm grateful for sure, but I'm not enthusiastic about the ingredients. Um, I opened this one up. That's why it's kind of got a little goopy stuff on it. And don't worry, it didn't leak in shipping or anything. But this one has... Let's see, it's, it's got matcha powder in it, um, which green tea I've talked about on here before can be helpful for, um, for pores, actually. Um, I don't know about doing it in a mask like this. I mean, they always take one small observation and then they, they push it to the limits, okay? So I suspect that putting it in, in a concentrated mask like this, uh, who knows? All right, and then Centella Asiatica, that's the, um, um, that, uh, you know, is popular in a lot of skincare. I've talked about it on here before. It's not really something to go chasing after too aggressively, honestly. Um, and then aloe, which can be soothing. Hydrated, hydrolyzed collagen. Okay, that's just going to help hold on to water. And uh, though it's got arbutin in it, which can have a brightening effect. And it also has a little bit of alpha hydroxy acid. So I imagine this is a little irritating. Oh, and it's got yogurt in it. So not vegan, but... I don't seek vegan skincare products, FYI, if you're wondering. I just eat a vegan plant-based diet. Um, okay, and then also they sent me this Matcha Mud Mask Deep Skin Cleanser. I'm always apprehensive about things like this. They usually, usually I don't even have to roll it over to, to figure out that it's, it's not going to be something I want to use or recommend. Okay, what does this have in it? Please be not much. Matcha powder, again, not sure why that... It would be, you need to go that over the top with it, but matcha is their thing. Glycerin and aloe, both moisturizing. Uh, oh, dipotassium glycerizate, that's a derivative of um, glyceric acid, uh, which can have a brightening effect. Xanthan gum, which is just the thickener, honestly. Um, I have some in my pantry <laughs> that I add to things. Menthol, ooh, bad ingredient. Menthol causes blood vessels to dilate facial redness. Menthol is in there and this will probably give a little bit of a tingling sensation. It's because of the menthol. It's not really doing anything beneficial, trust me. It's just somewhat harmful. Coconut oil, very irritating. I don't advocate putting straight oils on the face, but I suppose maybe in this it's okay because you're going to wash it off. And laurel sour base. Laurel and sour base. I have no idea what either of those are. So yeah, I don't know when I'll get around to trying these out. I'm not really a fan of the mud masks. They don't really do anything and they tend to be drying and irritating, but that is them. 
So yeah, that's I'm excited about the teas though. I mean that's really that's really what they should stick to, honestly, is tea. <laughs> My old denim jacket and is it always cold in our grocery store? Is anyone else's grocery store freezing? Mine is. But I'm keeping it cash. Yes. This is one of those H-Mart is freezing holes that I love. And then these are velvet joggers that might not still be available. At, I'll show you why later. <clears throat> Moving over here. Um, yeah. And uh, so, so it's just chopped up oil and then put it in freezer bag and I can freeze it. And then oh, it. I'm sitting here pretty early in the morning and just filmed this. This is what I did on top of a mountain when we went up to the top of a mountain in Palm Springs for one day. He's never really seen snow because he wasn't here when it snowed in San Antonio. I'm like, get up! In our world, chilly. All right, I'm gonna actually put on some clothes, film the intro. I'm you just wake up like that. Okay, you look very nice. So I've just started my dinner and I'm making a um, easy like soup on the stove that I've really been enjoying and I'm hoping that I can share the recipe with you in a separate video this week. But real quick, it's basically just, um, I have simmering here on the stove, a little bit of ginger, one clove of garlic, a quarter of a white onion chopped up, and a little bit of green bell pepper. And then I added in some of the enoki mushrooms. I don't know if you can see them there and I also added one thing of bok choy and then just a quarter of a teaspoon of mustard powder you'll recall I showed you guys that I purchased some lotus root um, slices that are pre-packaged and then I also purchased an entire lotus root and I was a little bit like leery that I'd be able to handle the whole root and know what to do with it. Turns out it is super easy. It is just like a potato. The thing peels like a potato and slices like a potato. So here, so I went ahead and sliced, peeled it and sliced it up into just sort of thin slices. And then you put it in water and add a little bit of vinegar to keep it from turning brown. And um, this is essentially like a root, okay? It's kind of like rutabaga basically, but it's got these cool little holes in it so it looks interesting. So I just float a few of those slices into my broth and it soaks up the flavor and breaks down and softens as it's slow simmering. So yeah, I've got that. And then these are just some of the enoki mushrooms left over from that one bundle. I really enjoy those. Here I'm trying to do, um, I had soaked these black beans last night and I'm gonna try just putting them in my Proctor Silly here and uh, slow cooking them. But, so, you know, they won't be ready for dinner tonight or anything, I don't think, or I don't intend to eat them tonight. But guess what I do intend to eat mixed in with that is, I'm so proud of myself, you guys. I finally did it. I have sprouted the mung beans. Look how cute they are. These came out so easy. They, they, this was so easy to do. I just did like, I don't know, three tablespoons of the mung beans and water. And then I just, I honestly just put them in a mason jar with a little bit of cheesecloth over them. I didn't even mess with that jar, that, that special sprouting jar I had for my herb. I just did this and they sprouted up in like seriously, a day and a half really quickly. Yes, yeah, so you guys were totally right. The um, the mason jar method with the cheesecloth works much better than, than that sprouting jar thing that I had. But anyways, that is what I'm having for dinner tonight. And we'll see how the uh, the beans do in the slow cooker. I'll probably have those for, maybe I'll make my black bean burgers tomorrow. I haven't had those in a while. Maybe I'll make those tomorrow with those tomorrow night. So yep, that is what I'm cooking. Well, hey guys, what's up? Went to the gym and uh, just got out of the shower. But last Tuesday, I um, talked a little bit about a, I guess, winter skin tip as far as keeping uh, the shower short and greasing up, um, you know, putting on your body moisturizer onto wet skin right after the shower. <clears throat> Another tip um, this winter, which will come in handy if you aren't already doing it. Um, I talked about this and showed this in my hand care routine, if you will. Um, these are just some white cotton gloves. Excuse the little hair <laughs> that has trapped on there. There we go. These are just some white cotton gloves that, um, you know, you can get at a medical supply store. You can get them on Amazon. They're super cheap. Um, fortunately, here in Houston, I haven't really needed to wear them like I have in drier winter climates. 
Um, however, these are fantastic if you are battling any kind of hand dermatitis, hand eczema. Um, what I would uh, tell you to do is uh, basically just put on um, just put on a thick and greasy moisturizer. I happen to be a fan of Vanny Ply ointment. Um, this is fragrance free. It's the same people who make Vanny Cream and Free and Clear Shampoo. It's great for the inflamed uh, skin of eczema and irritated skin, okay? Because it doesn't have anything that is a common allergen in it. And by the way, this, at least on their website, this company does not, states they do not test on animals. So, um, I believe they're cruelty free, but I can't I can't ever affirm that 100%. Um, however, I'm really a fan of this stuff. I also, you know, love CeraVe healing ointment. Vaseline is great. Um, Aquaphor is good, but has lanolin in it. And people with eczema are, are susceptible to developing allergies to lanolin. So um, Vanny Ply is best, um, and it's a great one. And, uh, but va Vaseline is also very good as well. Vaseline and Vanny Ply are essentially are very similar. But anyways, you just grease up and then you put these on, okay? And it occludes that, that nice hydrating barrier on there and really helps seal the water into the skin and helps start to heal the skin of the hands. Um, and you know, these are pretty neutral. They don't have any dyes or allergens or anything in the fabrics. And you just hang out like, like with these on your hand for a little while. It's like a nice little spa treatment. Um, it can really, really help a lot. You definitely want to avoid in these settings any kind of natural, you know, essential oil, fancy fragranced hand cream. Honestly, guys, when the skin is dry, parched, it is it is really, really fragile, okay? It's like it's like if you had a fever and, and you know, you tried to, to run a marathon or something, you'd, you'd more likely be injured, okay? The skin is is, is sick and needs a, needs a little TLC, okay? And that is really the best way to, to give it some TLC on your own, um, you know, while, while you're waiting to get in to see a dermatologist to figure out the cause of the hand dermatitis, okay? Because it's not always just related to you dry winter skin. It could be a variety of things, something you're coming in contact with. Um, it could also be, um, it could also be a hand fungus. Hand fungus is very common as well as uh, psoriasis. You know, those are some common um, mimickers of just dry hands. Um, and so rather than trying to uh, self self-treat, at least this is something pretty, um, pretty innocuous that you can do that will really help regardless of the problem. So I hope that tip is helpful for you guys. Um, but anyways, speaking of hands, I brought him in here. I showed this in my iHerb haul last week. I keep this in the kitchen. Um, this does have fragrance in it, but they make a fragrance free one. And this is uh, cruelty free and vegan, the Attitude hand soaps, but this is the um, pear nectar scent. And I'm really enjoying this. These are so cute, you guys, so cute. Um, but anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the vlog today. I'm going to uh, to uh, check on my uh, my dashi, if you will. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.